Hi, welcome. This is Jay Bussell from Equipment Zone. I'm thrilled that you tuned in for some additional training. It is one of our favorite things to do at Equipment Zone. We have uh, quite a crew of trainers, and they are wonderful people in every way because they walk the walk. So it's really cool uh, for me. I feel lucky, blessed, and I feel just gratitude when I see how many of our team uh, authentically care and try to walk the walk. Like they know how to print, they know how to do these things. So it's been a uh, fun process in getting ready for this uh, webinar and sharing some of the strategies. I'm excited to um, you know, share and present. So welcome to all of you, glad that you made it. Today's session is all about uh, really a couple of marketing strategies and building on a, a proven, um, something I've done over the years personally, and I've talked to hundreds of business owners and entrepreneurs. So the takeaway is how can we use our technology and the equipment we have with some marketing strategies to increase sales? So if that sounds like a winning formula to you, uh, then you're at the right place with the right guy, this guy. So thanks for tuning in everybody. Seriously, let me uh, share my screen. I'm gonna go through some slides first, probably for the first uh, 30 minutes, maybe a little less. And then I have some samples here to show you. Um, and then I'll try to take a few questions and then we'll wrap up. So that's our game plan. Hopefully you are uh, ready. Put your seatbelts on, uh, grab, grab water, grab some snacks. Let's do this. All right. So thanks again, everybody for tuning in and let's see, share screen. Let's do this. Okay, so uh, you know who Equipment Zone is, and we appreciate your business. We appreciate the relationships that we've built through this pandemic. And truly, truly, I hope that you all are rebounding, that you've been able to, um, uh, you know, refocus your business maybe and find through uh, new ideas, new strategies, new techniques, um, ways to work through this pandemic. I know it has been a struggle for many. Uh, for some of you, you, um, you know, you're barely hanging in there. You've let me know that, and I and I appreciate that. And I hope that some of the strategies I share with you today can, in some way, bring you some hope and possibly some new business. I can't guarantee it. I wish I could, uh, but I can guarantee that it works because it's worked for me. And like I said, literally hundreds of other businesses. So stay safe. Now, this is a great quote I want to share. Know your audience, wear your guests' shoes. That's, don't forget the human factor. Create a weenie. That was an, uh, uh, what, what Walt Disney would say is, is, a, is a term he used. And it's an inelegant way to say what we might call a visual magnet. Um, communicate visually, create turn-ons, avoid contradictions, and most importantly, build themes and tell stories. So. I wasn't smart enough to say that. I don't know Walt Disney. I didn't work for Walt Disney, but this gentleman did, and he wrote a book. Marty Sklar, who was the past president of Disney Imagineering, what a great title, and he knew Walt Disney. And this was something that he had learned from Walt and the team at Disney to create a weenie, which is super funny. We wouldn't say that today, but that's what he called it. And it was that visual magnet, something to draw people in, something that's emotional. And to be able to communicate visually, okay, as well as a concept that I want to build on, which is visual literacy. And I want to get into that now. But don't forget, we need to build themes and we need to tell stories. And when we can do that and incorporate uh, a direct-to-garment printer, a solvent printer, a dye sublimation printer, any printer, when we can do that with our business and our craft of apparel decoration, or signage, or promotional products, or incentives and awards, um, all of it, when you can pull that together and build a theme and tell a story, you're capturing a memory. And in some cases, you're capturing time. And I mean, literally, it's, it's impressive how things can pull together like this. So great quote here to kick us off. And in terms of that, I want you to think about Mickey Mouse. Think about Mickey. Can you see him in your head right now? Can you visually see him? Can you see the caricature? Can you see his feet, his hands, his nose? Is he wearing shoes? Does he have gloves or are those hands? 
right? But you can see them, can't you? Why? Why is that possible? I haven't shared any visual imagery of Disney or of Mickey. I've only referred to them in, in words. But we can see that in our mind, right? That's the power of that weenie. That's the power of communicating visually. So here he is. Here's our buddy. Here's our pal. And uh, think about that for just a second. You know, he is wearing shoes. He is wearing shorts. I don't know if those are gloves or his hands, um, but I think it's interesting that we, without anything really to, to build on, I knew you could all see him in your mind. So remember that lesson. There's an important lesson in there about, about that. Now, of course, we're not Disney. We don't have uh, 70 years to build on and millions and millions and multi-millions of dollars to pour into this brand. Um, but what we can do is, is learn some lessons to figure out ways to apply them to our businesses at small scale. Okay, so enough about Disney. Visual literacy was that principle that I brought up. This is the ability to recognize and understand ideas that are conveyed through visible actions or visible images. Okay, so think about that for a minute. What does that really mean? That's kind of a technical definition. I can recognize something, I can understand the idea visibly. Okay, maybe another way to put that is when you see it, you get it. Okay, like no explanation is needed and you immediately understand. And this is, is most true with icons and symbols. And it's sometimes true with logos. Now for most of our small businesses, unless we have done an amazing job of branding and, and in, a, in a local market where we've really owned our space or owned a niche, sometimes it's harder for people to remember our logo, okay? So think about that and, and remember that and what can we do to improve on that? I'm not gonna go too far into, into, that, uh, into those answers today, but, but icons and symbols. Think about your phone. Think about how that phone is laid out. And, and all of the little apps have symbols, have icons, and that's how we visually remember them. As soon as we see it, we know what it is. So that's our definition of visual literacy. That's what I wanted to kind of start this, this concept with you today and some of these marketing strategies that will help you build some sales so that you have that feeling. And as you're processing this information, you can think about well, what icons do I have in my logo? Are there any icons or symbols within my logo or that are incorporated in my logo? So if you look at the bottom of the screen and you say equipment zone, you can see there's an ink drop, a little droplet of ink. That, that would be a symbol or an icon not just the text and not the shield that's containing it. Um, those could be symbols. The shields could be symbols at some point. Think of Harley Davidson, one of the most famous worldwide brands. And that shield, even without text, is both trademarked, copyrighted, and branded, and untouchable, so don't screw with uh, Harley. <laughs> but the shield alone, even without text, is immediately recognizable, identifiable, and when you see it, you get it. You know it's Harley. Um, by the way, don't print Harley. Okay, unless you have a purchase order from a Harley Davidson dealership, that's different. So you see it, you get it, you immediately understand it. Visual literacy. Now let me give you some examples. Okay, quickly. One, this this should be this should be kind of fun for you guys. So if I click on this, we all know what that is, right? You you would not be confused. It's a T-shirt. It's a line drawing of a T-shirt. It's an outline. It's not. It's not correct. It's not to size, but we see it. We get it. That's visual literacy. Next one. Okay. Now, if I shared this with the audience 20 years ago, you probably wouldn't know what this was. You would. You would recognize the hand is holding something, but I'm not sure that you would know that that's a a, a cell phone or some form of a communication device. Android iPhone, et cetera. Okay, think about that for a minute. So times change, right? Icons shift, meanings move, all right? So that's interesting to me. This one is also interesting. As soon as you see it, you immediately know what it is. It's a rocket ship. It's not even close to appropriate. No rocket was ever built like that and launched, okay? It's, it's symbolic, but we immediately think of it and see it for a rocket ship. I mean, you know, it's almost, it's cartoonish, right? But that's okay. Visual literacy. We see it, we get it. We know what it means and we know what it stands for. So I want to pause here for just a second. Think about this. Think about the taglines 
or the marketing messages that could go along with that rocket ship. Blast off to the moon. All systems go. Launch. Launch date. Um, lift off. Right? We can come up with all of these these words, and once you put those words and those messages together with this simple icon, it starts to tell a story. And that's what I'm trying to lead you guys to see in a very easy way. I'm not trying to trick anybody. The last one here is an envelope, but it's become synonymous with email. And most people will recognize that as, as email, as something, a symbol uh, uh, to tell you a communication and have information waiting for you um, and so we'll see that as, a, as an icon for email, but it is an envelope. So t-shirt, phone, rocket, envelope. T-shirt, phone, rocket, envelope. T-shirt, phone, rocket, envelope. Think about that for a minute. It was easy, right? There'll be a test later on. Now building past simple icons, we can think of these iconic brands. Um, Apple, literally an apple. Um, and the Nike swoosh. That's what it's called, the swoosh. The, it was, you know, that check. Uh, but in motion. Um, so we, we, we know what they are, but now it's different. What story does it tell? What feelings does it evoke? What message is it trying to share with me? And, and it's different and it moves and it changes. So for Apple, it could be technology, it could be communication, it could be music, it could be um, a lot of things. With Nike, it could be sports, it could be health, it could be balance. Um, don't forget, Nike started out as a shoe company, and they are much, much more than that today. So simple logos, simple icons, symbolism, we understand it, visual literacy, we see it, we get it, we know what those represent, okay? I hope someday that your logo is as iconic as those two. It would be super impressive. Um, let's be realistic, it probably won't happen, but I don't want to burst your bubble, I just want to kind of set a realistic stage. Um, in your local area, you could be the Nike of decorated apparel. So it is possible. Um, let's keep moving through some slides, okay? So think of this for a minute. Home Depot, right? By the way, I've done some research on this. I think as, as of a few years ago, so I haven't checked recently, but there, there were, to my knowledge, eight or nine brands that have been able to trademark a color in certain combinations and under certain circumstances. Home Depot is one of them. You would not be able to create a, any kind of hardware store anywhere in the United States and use that color orange, even if the text were different, even if you said something completely different, even if you said Jay's hardware store and more, but I used that color of orange, eventually Home Depot and their lawyers would come knocking on my door. For sure, 100% guaranteed. So color is also important. Um, and I, and I, I don't mean to trick you, but I'd like you in the chat box, I'd like you to tell me the color of this logo. What color is this logo? And I'll wait. This is the interactive portion of today's webinar. When you actually type and pick and tell me in the chat box, what color is that Home Depot logo? Okay, I'm starting to get some answers. Thank you, Liz. Joanna Lawrence, thank you. Home Depot orange. Liz said orange and white. Texas orange. Oh, Rick, are you from Texas? Really? <laughs> oh, that's great. Tangerine. Okay, that's a good guess. All right, you guys are doing well. I appreciate the interactivity. Thank you for, for playing along with me. The color of the logo is white. Almost in all circumstances, the text and the square and the registration circle are in white, okay? But they will always present it, almost always, almost always, not always, almost always, they will present it in an orange background, okay? Now, there are stores that still have legacy signs that say the text, home, the Home Depot, and it's in orange, all right? But if you look through their style guide or their branding guide, they will let you know that those are the those are, the, those are the facts, those are the laws according to Home Depot. So it is a little tricky, and I didn't mean to trick you, but I just wanna, I want you to think about that relationship of the orange and the logo being white, but the background is orange. So predominantly we think of the Home Depot logo as orange. I ask hundreds of participants when I do training, before I even show the logo, I'll do things like, okay, I want you to think of a logo, I'm gonna give you the name of the logo, and then I want you to shout out the color 
as fast as you can. As soon as you think of it, just shout it out loud, loud and proud, shout the color. And I'll say Home Depot. And 100 out of 100 will say orange. Okay. So it's not wrong. It's just wrong. <laughs> but visual literacy means that we understand it and we process it this way. Okay. So it's just an interesting side note. Um, now, before I go to the next page, I want you to think of a logo. And I'm going to tell you the name of the logo, okay? And then I want you to tell me the color. And you can type it in the chat box, okay? So the main competition for Home Depot is Lowe's. Lowe's, what color is that logo? Type it in the chat box for just a minute. Oh, and Rick, born and raised in Brooklyn. Okay, shout out to New York. Good job. Tricky. Blue. Some said white. Blue. Most are saying blue. Some are saying white. Okay. Now that, I've, now that I've shared this with you, you're rethinking this, aren't you? Your brains are trying to solve the puzzle, which is great. Thank you for playing along with me. Guess what? You're both right. In this case, it is white text and it is placed on a blue container or a backdrop or a background or a graphical element. So the text is white, the shield of the graphic element representing a home or a house or building is blue. Okay, and there are some variations of that, but for, for most 99 times out of 100, this is how it's presented. So how did you already know that before I showed you that? How did you know that the Home Depot was orange or that Lowe's was blue? How did you know that, right? Well, because they've had multi-million dollar budgets. These are brands that have been in existence for more than 20, 25 years. Um, and they have poured a lot of money into telling you about sales, about offers, about paint and hammers and fixing your house and remodeling your bathroom and come to Lowe's and come to Home Depot. And, do, 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 do. and the more and more we see it, the more and more our brains remember it. Okay, so repetition does work in all forms of marketing and advertising. Um, but you don't want to be uh, you don't want to be repeating mistakes because then you're being remembered for the wrong things. So. Interesting, isn't it? Isn't that interesting that we know that? Like if I say Coke, you guys all think red. Coca-Cola, red. And that's true. Um, and, and let's think about this for just a minute. Coca-Cola, a lot of people think that the logo's never changed. Coca-Cola logo has evolved slightly. It has made some changes. And I'm not talking from Coca-Cola to Coke. I'm saying the actual script in red, usually white, by the way, but oftentimes red, they are interchangeable depending on product and depending on placement. It has evolved slightly, about eight or nine times in 100 years. Now, compare that to Pepsi. Pepsi has changed their core logo many times, many more times, upwards of 20 times. Who's right? Who's wrong? Neither. They both have opportunities. The traditionalists would say Coca-Cola is smart because they haven't changed their logo. Therefore, it's easier for people to retain and remember longer. Some others that are a little bit more avant-garde, a little bit more forward thinking would say, yes, but Pepsi, every time they change their logo, they have an opportunity to tell a new story, to retell a story, or to pivot from that story, or to add to that story. And it gives them a reason slash excuse to continue to pound out that Pepsi logo and that Pepsi logo and that Pepsi logo over and over and over again, right? Okay, so they're both right, and they're probably both wrong. I think it's, uh, it depends. So in our case, for you specifically, Word to the wise, um, if you have not taken a look at your logo in the last three years, if it's identical, if it's the same thing, I would question that for just a second. I would ask you, has your business changed or evolved at all in the last three years? Are you servicing different kinds and categories of clients now than, you, than when you started? especially if it's been three to five years, because I bet your business has evolved. I bet you've grown. I, 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 would, I would venture a guess that you have changed. In some way, you are doing things different. Maybe you've added new decorating equipment. So how does that impact your branding? How does that impact your logo? How does that impact your message? Do people get it when they see it? When they see it, do they get it, right? So I can't fix everybody today, and it's not my job to do that. I'm just trying to help you think through this and strategically have reasons. Okay, so that you can calm your emotional voice with some logic, but then you can tell your logical brain, hey, this is all about emotional. This is about feelings. This is about getting people to remember us. So 
That's why in, in, in a small part of being very transparent, that's a big reason why we wanted to do more training webinars is to build our relationship with you, is to connect better with you so that you remember Terry, you remember Jeff and Amy and Roy and myself and others. So, okay, off the logos. Transitioning back to emotions, which is where I was going. Those logos and those symbols and those icons can be very emotional. And one way to amp that emotional feeling personalization. Nobody loves their name. Nobody loves their business company name and nobody loves their logo more than that entrepreneur or that business owner. They love it. Love it. Love it. Now we all love it. Now there's a company in New Jersey called Myron, M-Y-R-O-N, Myron Manufacturing. And for the last 25 years, for sure, they have sent out a pen, a writing instrument, you know, a pen, a writing instrument. They have sent out to every business in the United States and they continually scrub these lists. So every time you register your business, you can buy that information. Myron Manufacturing eventually will get that and they will send you a pen, a promotional product, a pen with your name on it. And usually there's a card with the envelope that says, these are 79 cents. If you'd like to buy a hundred more, fill out this information or go online, click here and get a discount. Boom. A hundred pens show up. That was easy. Amazing. Why it works is the power of personalization. It's emotional. When I have something that has my name on it, I keep it. I won't throw it away. I won't throw this away because it has my name on it. If it's one of my favorite pens and it has a logo on it that I really like, like Promo Kitchen, then I'm going to definitely hang on to this because it's very meaningful to me. Uh, it's, it's a service organization in our industry and that believes in mentorship and education. So I'm a big fan of Promo Kitchen and I'm going to keep it. But if it had my name on it, I would never throw it away. Never. Even if it stopped working, I would still keep it. There's probably several of you today, right now, listening, watching, that have pens in your drawer that don't work anymore, but you kept them because they have your name on it or your business name, right? So that's important information for us marketers and business owners to remember. Nobody loves their name, their company name, or their, or their logo more than a business owner. So how do we play to those strengths? How do we manipulate that in a positive way so that people will continually get excited when we show them what we can do, whether that's a DTG printer, whether that's a dice up printer, whether it's a solvent printer, we have the ability to print one. Okay. That's huge. That's giant. That means personalization should be part of our, that's what we should be known for. That's what we should be doing with every outbound order. Okay. So look for that opportunity, right? So here, here I'm going to keep this really simple for everybody, not because you wouldn't get it, but it was just easier for me to explain it this way. If I can correctly deliver uh, and meet the expectations and deliver on time, my customer will be happy. They asked for t-shirts, I printed their logo, the logo is in the correct place, the correct colors, and I delivered on time, there were no mistakes, my client is happy. So that's a simple formula. But what I really want you to think is beyond that, because that's transactional. And I want to evoke the emotion, I want to create loyalty, I want to actually upsell I want to be able to, to entice them, not to trick them, but I want, to, I want to engage them at a level so that they can say, oh, I didn't know you did that, whatever that is. I, did, I thought you were just the t-shirt guy, okay, which is a common stereotype and, and you hear the, you, know, you get pigeonholed and, and you're the t-shirt guy, you're the t-shirt gal, you're the, you know, you're the hoodie master, whatever. So this is an opportunity for us to change the equation. So, and the happiness also changes, it increases. So if I can deliver that and I successfully deliver t-shirts, why would I not also showcase my talent by including another product? I already have their logo. I already have all of the equipment. All I need is a tote bag or a hoodie or a long sleeve t-shirt or a hat or a golf towel or a shop towel or something else that would be easy and quick for me to print a few of and I will blow their mind because they weren't expecting it. And when I can give value on top unexpectedly without asking for anything, the equation is one plus one equals more. In this case, it would equal three or four or five. So are you doing this now? And if you're not, you're missing a giant opportunity to rebrand, to tell the story, to create an emotion, to build trust and build loyalty. So I, I really, really strongly encourage all of you on any and all future orders from today forward until the end of the year, 
at least, if not the end of time, look for ways to surprise and delight. Rather than just deliver the hoodies, throw in a couple t-shirts. Rather than just do t-shirts, surprise them with one or two hoodies. It's worth it. It's an investment in your relationship. It's the best form of marketing you can do. You have a captured client who is going to fall in love with you and trust you and reward you with more business. And there's a high probability that they didn't know that you could print hoodies or they didn't know that you could print high top sneakers or they didn't know that you could do hats or they didn't know that you could do coasters or stickers or mugs and mugs with personalized with my name on it, right? There's a reason that I'm going to keep this giant. It's like a, it's, it's enormous. It's, it's, a water bottle or it's like a thermos. The reason I'm gonna keep it is it's meaningful to me. I'm, as most of you know, I have a, a fetish for tacos. So I, <laughs> I am doing a little show with a friend of mine called Tacos with Jay and Jeff. And, and, a, and a supplier made this for me. They only made one, but because they have a laser engraver, they could chisel away that outer edge and what you see that's shiny right there, okay, that's, the power of personalization. I will keep this forever. Even if I don't use it, I'm going to keep it because it has my name on it. And yes, I have used it. So if this principle is true, and I know it's true, I've done it in my own business. Yes, there was a time, a long time ago, when I was a struggling family-owned screen printing company and promotional product agency. And we learned this then, that we would tell people what we did and it wouldn't matter. But as soon as they physically could see it and touch it and hold it, Boom, it opened up all kinds of doors, all kinds of amazing conversations, and it almost always led to more business. So if you want your business to grow faster, this is the kind of marketing to invest in first, before Facebook ads, before SEO, before you know YouTube videos and click funnels and, and, and all of that's great, all of that's great, but this is better because you have a captive audience and you're building on trust and loyalty, so please, Look for those opportunities. And by the way, shop towels. You, you can find shop towels. These, these are, this, was, this was from Sanmar. This is a Port Authority. It's, it's a really inexpensive golf towel. But it's so, it's, it, I don't want to say, it, they're so inexpensive that I would consider, they come in lots of colors, so you can, you can do more than blue. Get white. White would be easier to print on. And, and print, their, print their name, print their logo, first name, initials, something. Throw, throw a dozen of those in. It, it, they will keep them. They will use them. And every time they have a mess, they will go, God, I'm glad I have that. That's so cool that they printed these for me and they made these for me. So look for that. And then always, always, always figure out ways. Find out what people are into. If they're into golf, factor that in. If they're into their favorite, if their favorite football team is the Kansas City Chiefs, don't print them anything that says Kansas City Chiefs. No, that's just, yeah, we don't want to do that. Um, not just because Terry Combs is one of the biggest Chiefs fans, and if he's listening, um, that's partly why we don't want to print anything, but also because we don't have the authority to do it. I know, I know, I know what you're all going to say. You're all going to say, but, 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 Jay, I'm not selling anything. And that's true. You're not. But you still do not have permission to print any logo, any logo that's not your own. You just don't have the permission to do it. Now, have we done this before? Of course. Do we, do we plaster that it's not for resale and this is just a sample? Of course we do. But the harsh reality and the truth and the truth at the bottom line, and you get lawyers in a room and there's big brands and they really care, they are going to have a problem with you printing their logo because you don't have an agreement. You don't have a license. You don't have a royalty. You don't have anything in place. You're just willy-nilly printing the NFL logos, the Harley Davidson logos, the Mickey Mouse logos, the fill-in-the-blank logos. I strongly recommend you don't do it. Okay, I know you're going to do it anyway, but you heard it here from Equipment Zone, from Jay, this guy. Come up with something else. Okay, now, if you're into tacos, if you happen to be, I have a pet, I have my, I have my therapy taco by my side at all times. And just in case, you might need a little comfort. So if, if, if people know that I'm a taco freak, then they remember me for that. Um, but it doesn't have to be about food or tacos or that. It's just find out what your customers are into. Ask them hobbies, interests. Dig deep, ask harder questions. It might turn out that they love yachting, sailing, okay? So now that you know that, it was their dream to have a certain size, you know, sailing vessel. Then, then, or maybe they're into fly fishing, right? Or maybe they're into whatever. 
figure it out. Surprise and delight, print something for them, personalize it. Because once you can do that, you give them value, you personalize it, and you give them something that they're actually interested in or with their initials or with their name on it, guess what? Boom, it's explosive. It's not one plus one equals three or four, it's one plus one equals 20, equals 100, equals I, I have loyalty in you, I have trust in you, okay? So simple principles that will help you build your business. That's a really important one, but I know it works 100% every time. If it were my business, I would, I would not allow a single order to go out the door without some other version of their logo on another product. Period, end of story. Build that time into it, plan ahead, have some samples, have some blanks, make it happen. It will grow your business, 100% guarantee it. That one I can guarantee, okay? Now, themes, right? This was part of the session. I want to make sure we build on this, themes. Why themes, Jay? The purpose of a theme is that will help connect that person and that objective, that, that purpose, to something that I'll always remember and recognize, something that I can tangibly think of and feel. I can go back in time and say, oh my gosh, I still have a, a, <laughs> a seventh grade football jacket. Uh, I mean, this is for a youth, a youth football little league team in California. I still have it. It has a really cool embroidered uh, applique on the back that says Gladiators. That was the name of our team. And I've got three stars on the left, 76, 77, and 78, the years that I played. And it's got my name embroidered on the, on the right front chest, Bussell. Um, it's in a horrible old Vegas gold terrible color it looks literally like it came from the 70s and <laughs> it did and there's no way it would fit anyone in my family but you know why i kept it oh my gosh all of the memories my name is on it it brings me back to some of those emotional moments and and the theme of little league football the theme of gladiators on the back it connects me with that so it helps it helps me remember those days. It helps me remember the story. It helps me remember. And, and in that case, I was the perfect audience. Now, when I got it, I wore it everywhere, everywhere, to school every day. So proud of that jacket, right? So we all know this is true. So how are we going to use that in our design and in our marketing? So let me give you some examples. Printing logos on stuff versus incorporating a theme. I want you to be able to see these side by side. No one should own this tank top. This tank top right here is just a logo. It's literally the Cadillac logo printed on a tank top. Now, if you are such a hardcore fan of Cadillac and this brand, and you're so proud of your vehicles, that you, on Saturday and Sunday, walk around the house washing your car, <laughs> doing whatever you do with that tank top on, man, you are a committed fan. Fan being short for fanatic, right? That's probably not something anyone would want. Now. In, in the case I'm about to show you, here's why a theme is better. Not only does the one on the right tell a story, it's targeted to the right audience. What you didn't know was that the one on the left was given out at a three-on-three -three basketball tournament for kids ages six to 16. Nobody wanted them. Why? Because kids don't want that tank top with a Cadillac logo on it. What they did want was the one on the right, especially when we printed their last names on the back. That was a keeper. So the one on the left went to the garage, went to the garbage, went to Goodwill. The three G's where all boring t-shirts go. Garage, garbage, Goodwill. Now, the one on the right, guess where that t-shirt went? Into the drawer. And that's the game we're playing. Is this a keeper? Mm, I don't know. It depends on the graphic. Depends on the theme. Depends on if my name is on it. So same logo, same. In, in fact, it costs no more to print the one on the right than the one on the left. Cost being the same. The only time it increased the cost was when we printed it on back. And you know what we asked for? We asked for $5 to personalize it. And you know what the conversion rate was? Over 80%. So it was an upsell. So if you are dealing with youth team sports at any level, Remember this, you're capturing a moment. You're building a long-term memory. There's a high probability, and, and design it this way. I want these kids to keep it, just like Jay kept his, his letterman's jacket, if that's what we would have called them then, I don't know. Um, team jacket, I think is what we call them. 
but but think about that when you're designing, trying to incorporate a theme, trying to build on visual literacy. Is this the one that makes it into the drawer? Is this the one that some kid is going to keep for 20 years? That's our goal, not the one on the left. By the way, the one on the left is Lynn. May I hide my stuff like at your <laughs> Rick, no, no. I have a rule at my house, thanks to my wife. It's called one in, two out. For every one new t-shirt I bring in, I have to release two. It's a catch and release program at my house. I have too many t-shirts. Trust me, it's an addiction. Okay, let's keep going. Logos on stuff. Now, hmm, that's interesting. Jay, are you making fun of Adidas and the Chicago Bulls? No, in no way. That is a very popular pattern. They know what they're doing, by the way. But I want you to see the difference. There really isn't a theme there. That's just information. The Bulls, the iconic logo of the Bull, basketball, the Adidas logo, et cetera, et cetera. Still a winner. This one on the left is just a little bit more conservative. And in demographics, it's probably going to hit the north side of Chicago, and it's going to be for men and women from 35 and up. Okay? This one has a different theme, totally different look. It's still a Chicago Bulls t-shirt, but it's on black, and it's different. And it has razor wire, and it's got two bowls on it, and it's spray paint, splatter paint. This is going to be for a different audience, and there's more of a theme there. Rebels, misfits, breakthrough at all costs, whatever it takes, right? So that's what I want you to think about, the differences there. Let me show you another one in case you think this was just me. It's not me. I'm sharing with you the NBA, and now I'm sharing with you the, the Major League Baseball. Logos on stuff, New York Yankees. If I'm a fan, I probably have a t-shirt. I'm not a fan of the Yankees. But here's something that no other team can claim. 27 rings, 27 championships. So the t-shirt on the right tells a story. The one on the left says you're affiliated with the team. The one on the right builds on themes. Tell me a story. Make it emotional. Yeah, Supper, how many rings do you have? 27. So think of that, 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 that memorabilia, that nostalgia, that fanatical moment, that tribalism almost and incorporating that into themes is powerful okay all right so let me give you a real world example recently promo kitchen is a uh, charity that i support it's not a charity it's a, it's a it's a non-profit foundation in the promotional product space where mentors on both the promo side and the apparel side come together it's education it's mentorship and i'm lucky enough to be one of the chefs it's, it's chefs it's a proud opportunity for me um, to be a part of this organization. You can check them out, promokitchen.org, O-R-G. Um, but my point is, that's their logo, okay? And notice that there's a symbol or an icon because it's the kitchen and because we call ourselves, those of us that are on the board are all chefs. Those that are new volunteers are called sous chefs, okay? The terminology, it's the lingo, the fork and the knife inside that seal, right? So what did I do? All of those little circles that you see, that's a pattern. I created that. I took the main icon, the fork and knife, and I made a pattern out of all of those symbols. What did I do with it after that? I took that pattern and I repurposed it for something different. So if that's the normal logo and I print that on a t-shirt, those that are true fans might go, yeah, that's cool. But if we do an annual mixer in Las Vegas, and there's four or 500 people that all want to go to the House of Blues to hang out for an hour and a half and network and have a party and have a few beverages. Guess what? I need more than just that logo. I need to remind them of what we're doing. And this is an opportunity for me to incorporate that icon or that symbol or their logo into text. This is a strategy and a technique that has been used for years. It's not new. I didn't invent it. I can't take credit for this. But you need to be an observer of the game. You need to watch for this now. And you will start to see this in other places and in other businesses and other teams and other nonprofit associations, whether it's a church, whether it's a charity. This works. This applies. This is a way to reinvent someone's logo without changing their logo. It's a way for them to fall in love with it again. It's a way for them to order more T-shirts. It's, it's the on-ramp to selling more merch. So that's why this works. And you can do this in Corel Draw. You can do this in Adobe Illustrator. You could do this in Photoshop. Depending on what your skill set is, this is something that you could all do. Okay? Um, so another example. Here is the Equipment Zone logo and my name. And what was I about to do? I'm going to, I'm going to 
mask or I'm going to clip or I'm going to power clip, depending on the terminology that you, the, of the program you want to use, all of those symbols, those little icons, that, that logo, Equipment Zone, is a step and repeat logo. And I just put them on a slant so that they would go down to the right. And then I want to incorporate them into my name. So rather than just a boring J with just nothing, okay, what you can do is take that step and repeat pattern of someone's logo and combine it into a name, the name of a city, the name of um, their personal name, their last name, um, you know, the, the location of the trade show, um, you know, commemorate a, a, a date, maybe, maybe the, the founder's date, right? The day that they incorporated and started business, they're, they're going to celebrate that like an anniversary date. So you just have to think and get creative. And, and I was, I was hopeful that I could share some of these ideas and some of these strategies with you. Okay. We're, we're about 40 after the hour. So, um, last one, boom, how's that for amazing graphics? Okay, um, so the next thing I want to share with you, we are on the holiday season, officially, Halloween, then we have Thanksgiving, and fall festivals, fall harvests, then we have Christmas and Hanukkah and other religious holidays at the end of the year, so we call this the fourth quarter, it's game time, folks. It's time for you to rebound. So you're your clients may or may not celebrate Halloween, but there's a high probability that they have kids. And if they have kids, they're going to want to celebrate in some way. And this is a tricky year. And I get that. But if it were me and my business and my shop, I would definitely have some Halloween patterns. I would definitely have some Halloween themes and I would deliver their regular apparel, any shirt that they ordered, any stickers, any coasters, whatever they got for me. And I would surprise them with a tote bag or two or three. The tote bags, by the way, are very affordable. You can find 100% cotton tote bags or poly blends for easily under, uh, uh, I would say under $1.50, for sure under $2. It doesn't have to be the fanciest, you know, you're not, you're not giving away $20 bills here. So uh, under, under a couple dollars, literally, under three for sure printed and all of your time and energy. So if you can't find any of these patterns, I, I, don't know where to, I, I don't know what to tell you. They, they exist. They're out there. You can create your own if you want to go that far. Um, you, could, you could buy stock images. You could, um, if you have the talented uh, Vanessa, as we do, we're lucky enough. Vanessa, shout out to Vanessa, um, our, our web and graphic master in New Jersey at our headquarters. She was able to create these, find these, combine these, and, and, and gave them to me for the specific reason of sharing for this, for this and for the rest of the holidays. So what would I do with these patterns? Well, this is what I would do. And, and, and you can do whatever you want to do. But I would incorporate them into um, words just like I was doing before. So it changes the dynamic, doesn't it, when, when you see these. And, and, and it helps tell a story. And it's more than just black or orange. It's now engaging. It's more emotional, right? So it's when I see it, I get it. Visual literacy. This is, this is Walt Disney saying, you know, create a weenie, create a visual magnet, draw people in with their emotions, okay? So we did that. Roy helped me print some things this morning, so I'm excited to share with you. I'm going to share this here in a minute. I'll stop sharing my screen, and I'll show you a couple of samples. And you might be looking at these and go, wait, what, is, what? what are those? Well, the two on the left are, are, are for our patterns for high-top shoes, the sneakers we do. The one on the right is, is a fake pocket that I printed on a white t-shirt. So I'm going to share those with you now. So um, let's stop sharing here for just a second. And I will share actual uh, examples so that you can see them. Okay, so let's start off with a pullover, a sweatshirt. Okay. Check it out. Can you see that well? That is a pretty cool sweatshirt, right? Now, I didn't love the color yellow, to be honest with you, but it's what we had, so it's what we used. And I do think our friends at All We Do Is, Just Hoods, who sent this over for us, and they wanted to get some samples themselves. This next one, I think you'll recognize because it's the pocket. So here's the T-shirt, and here's the pocket, right? You can see that. Let me let zoom in a little bit so that you can see it a little bit better. It's just a printed pocket. It's just, it's, it's not a real pocket. It's just printed on there. By the way, that's just a fun idea and a trick that we used to do a lot of. Maybe it's not popular anymore, but 
And then the word boo, right? Boo. Okay, so you guys get the idea, right? You, this all makes sense to you. Now, let me share the ones that are super exciting. The ones that Roy spent some extra love today, getting a few of these ready. And I appreciate his work. I appreciate him helping me get this all set up because you know what, if I had these and I went trick or treating in these or I went to an event with these, I would be, uh, yeah, everyone would see them. Everyone would wanna know where I got them. I'd say, oh yeah, that's something I print. What, you can print those? Those are custom? Oh my gosh, look at that. Huh, how cool is that? So, this is the idea of a theme. This is what I'm talking about when I say pull this thing all together and figure out these are like ingredients to a great recipe. And yours is gonna be different than mine. I like a carne asada taco. You might like shredded chicken or vegetarian or shrimp, or maybe you don't like tacos at all. That's fine. We just have to figure it out, right? What is your lane? And then how does that work with your clients? What do they love? What are they passionate about? And how can we create some samples for them? Because this is the game changer that you need. You need to figure this out. And as you do it, whether you are a sublimation expert or a solvent printing expert or a DTG printing expert, this strategy works in all three examples, in all three um, printing techniques. So any questions for me, that's really the wrap. That's the strategy I was excited to share with you today and I hope you enjoyed it. So I'm gonna make sure I look down in the, in the chat box and also if the Q&A is open, but it doesn't matter if you use either one, no questions, okay, that's fine. So if there are no questions, if there's nothing for you to say or ask, uh, then guess what? We have accomplished what we wanted to accomplish. I am done. I am grateful for your time today. I do wanna share a couple of slides just to give a quick shout out to Equipment Zone uh, and today's session and all of the people that have helped behind the scenes um, for example, Vanessa Nilsson, who is our web designer and a graphic designer, she helps put things like this together and created those awesome patterns for me. So, so grateful to her. Uh, and then don't forget, we're really proud. <laughs> I always said we're really proud of these. Terry, I hope you're listening. I hope you chuckle. We used to tease people when we would see products that were like really expensive. And we said, boy, they sure are proud of that. Um, but you know what? We really are proud of these platens. And I don't care if you call them a shirt board or a pallet or a platen, these are the best. They are so well engineered, they are superior in every way, and they are equal to, if not better, in all cases. Um, uh, I, I, I can't, I, I mean, I know I work for Equipment Zone, I know I'm obviously biased, um, but you need to check these out. So you, you, may not, you may not be able to get them all today, um, I understand that, but do yourself a favor, figure out where your niche is. Um, we just did a webinar on Mon uh, was it Monday, no, Tuesday, two days ago with Roy and Jeff um, with the Ultimate Easy Hoodie Platen. And that hoodie platen is amazing, it's dynamic. So maybe you start with that one. Uh, visit our website, you can get more information or you can call your sales reps and ask them, you know, the, 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 is, is, what is the price? Is it on sale? You know, how does it work, et cetera, et cetera. They, they're all there to help you. Here's a couple of pictures from, from Tuesday. Um, zippered hoodie came out so good. I mean, it was so tight over that seam. It's amazing. And there was no ink on that zipper. And had there been, we would have been able to wipe it off once it was dry. It would have been no big deal. But um, it, it worked flawlessly. So really proud of those, um, th those products, those supplies, those accessories. So check those out on our website. Also, if you missed any webinars like the one we just did on Tuesday, you're always welcome to go back. Oftentimes we will have them posted on our website. If we don't have them there, they all live on our YouTube channel. So please visit our YouTube channel, equipmentzone.com on YouTube and um, search, go to YouTube, search Equipment Zone, boom, there we are. And subscribe, please subscribe because then every time there's an update of a new video and, and, and I would say, I'm not, I'm not exactly 18 out of 20, 19 out of 20, they're all training videos. Occasionally there will be a product unrolling or a product unveiling. So even that is still, I would consider training, but it's not just sales commercials. This is, we're trying to give you value. This has been our point since, well, before the pandemic, but we've just tripled down 
in March to give you as much training and as much knowledge as we knew how. Even, even though we're messy and we make mistakes, and I'm guilty of that all the time, and it's been a challenge for us this last six months in many, many ways behind the scenes, um, we knew that if we did this, we, we, we would be doing the right thing and, and hopefully we would be earning your trust long term. So let's wrap with the contact info. You're welcome to call us uh, for support. If you are not a client of ours yet, you can still call us. We'd love to help you out. Um, uh, and then of course, Terry, Jeff, and Amy are our primary sales reps. There is their information, reach out to them. Uh, if, if they have helped you in any way, tell them thank you. If you're interested in anything I said, you can email me, J dot b for basel j dot b at equipmentzone.com otherwise kids that's all i've got for you today so i will say uh goodbye and